hello there folks welcome back to my youtube channel this time i'm gonna make a very quick um, another rpg maker quick tutorial this time i really want it to be very quick and this tutorial is to show people how to uh, use region ids okay without the necessity for global variables now in case you don't know exactly what uh, global variables are i'm not gonna make you a you know introduction to this probably programming is not something you're interested in but in RPG Maker, you have, you know, control variables. Now, these variables in here, they are put in a collection, okay? There is something called an array. And this collection stores the uh, all the variables that you have available. Since my project is very lengthy, I will be using all 5,000. Although there are many slots that I still haven't deployed yet. But I want to be use the maximum so that I am sure. When you use global variables, every time you check the variable of a certain uh, the value of a certain variable or change its uh, value it has to actually be looked for in this collection of variables from 0 to 5000 so until it actually changes the value it actually has to go through each and every variable from the beginning from the first one to the one that you're actually changing so if you're having to change let's say the value of variable 300 it actually goes it has to go through all the variables okay it doesn't change them or do anything but it just makes sure that you know this is the only way it can actually find its way to the uh, 1300s uh, variable okay it has to go through variable 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 until 300 okay now this is something that is done like uh, lightning fast okay but if you can skip this part you can actually win a few milliseconds okay now milliseconds may actually be very little for you they may actually be insignificant but if you are having something that constantly needs to verify these variables it's gonna take a few milliseconds more and again more and again more and you can actually uh, pre-stage or even stage a bottleneck at a certain moment okay and one thing that you wouldn't want is your player having even from time to time like very rarely some spikes in your game so for example uh, i met someone on the forums that actually asked how can you actually uh, you know create an event that you know constantly checks for a region id you know the in case you don't know what a region id is the region id is technically this part you know you assign different of these ideas okay now let's actually put it like this so this area will be region id 35 of uh, you know this one will be region id 9 okay and you know you can actually assign them each and every way possible okay so how do you do this without you know typically you're gonna add a variable okay and you know it's gonna be a certain variable which you assign it to game data you go to character player map x okay so this one will be your map x of player then you create another one for max y, map y of your player and then probably you have to do you have to create two of these for any other event that you're gonna use so technically and from what i've been testing you're gonna end up with a lot of these variables especially if you're gonna do this a lot with many events so there's gonna be this constant you know like check for this variable here check for this variable uh you know like that far away in the variable collection and all this is gonna you know slowly but surely slow your project down okay uh, these ideas can be done without this it's done through uh, temporary variables technically something that you create in a script box and once the script box is executed that variable is deleted so it's no longer gonna have any place in your memory okay so you can create something like this okay let's actually go to a script box and show shortly what you can actually use so for the coordinates of the player it's much easier to use game player dot x okay and game player dot y okay now what these mean is the co x coordinate of the player the y coordinate of the player okay and for events you have game map dot events you have to write the id here right the id of the event without the zero so if you have id 0066 let's say you only write 66 okay so no zeros okay if you have 0060 you just write 60 okay and you have x okay that's that's like it okay 
instead of actually creating new variables and you know things like that now you're probably gonna ask how do I actually find the distance in between you know the player and a certain event it's actually done very easily um, if you're gonna write the conditional you don't actually need to do these okay you don't need to write these these were just the examples so if you want to find out the wait actually leave them here okay so let's see we want to find out the distance in between um, you know um, game player uh, you know like player and event to I don't know event 15 okay so we're gonna say um, if we have um, game player dot X minus I don't know this one okay if they overlap you'd want this to be zero it only works if your event is below player or above player because if it is same as player the player cannot step in that place of the event right or you may want this to be greater or equal to I don't know one okay if you want a greater distance right if the event is far away or if you want the events to be close you want this to be greater or equal or smaller than one okay but at the same time you will want to add an end uh, this one at the same time is greater greater or equal to zero because you know coordinates can actually be negative depending on the positioning of the player okay or you can actually have uh, this whole part okay this whole part you can actually put it in between a parenthesis you can multiply it by minus one and have it compared to one but come again let's not complicate ourselves too much okay so we have this part and at the same time we have this part now we need the y okay which has to be smaller than one okay and at the same time this part has to also be greater or equal to zero okay and we have to add y in here so technically if you want them to be in a certain range you have to do something like this okay now um, you have to delete all these so you have to make sure that they are in a certain range okay so equals or sm sm smaller or equal to one means adjacent okay RPG maker is octo directional because you also have diagonal movement so the diagonals are still range one because you can also move in diagonals okay so make sure when you use this you have to know that uh, even diagonals count as range one and each of these differences also has to be greater than zero because if this one let's say player coordinate let's say if player is located I mean well theoretically uh, the event can be let's say uh, below the player okay so if they are wait um, actually not greater or equal let's say not to zero to minus one because it's actually also minus one because you can actually have minus one if they are um, you know let's say in y um, so the lower you go downwards the map your y coordinate increases okay so if your play if your event is below the player okay you will have minus one okay because uh, the event's coordinate, the y coordinate, will be one greater than the player. So if you uh, create, you know, the sum of the player's value with the uh, actually the difference, right? If you deduct the uh, event's y coordinate from the player, since the event's y coordinate is greater than one, you'll have minus one. Okay, so okay and well you create this you open the bracers and you know in here you write your code okay whatever that may be now if you want to find out the region id okay this is e this is actually very simple all you need to do is one script line okay you have dollar game map dot 
region id and you use game map dot event id dot x okay for the x coordinate of the event and then wait then you copy this one you put y okay for the y coordinate and that's it okay you don't need to create extra variables this is just to calculate the distance but for the purpose of this video this is just it okay game map dot region id and you use this okay now uh, what if you want to do for the player okay uh, well if you want to do this for the player you're just gonna have as you've seen before game player dot x game player dot y and it's gonna be much easier okay so what if you want to add it oh wait what if you want to add this in a conditional well if you want to add this in a conditional you're gonna use a conditional branch script and in the script box of the conditional you're gonna take let's say uh, this one all right so if the value of this one okay equals equals or you can use equals 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 but uh, you can actually go for triple equals I usually go for the double because I'm only gonna this is just a you know uh, number value it's not gonna be anything complex let's say if it is equal to 3 okay and you create your stuff in here then let's say you're gonna create an else branch right and you're gonna put this one in here and say if this one is actually 4 I don't know uh, uh, let's say uh, play a certain sound uh, let's say play this sound if it is or, uh, I don't know play this sound um, I don't know if it is another sound uh, let's delete this one else um, let's say if this one is actually different than 3 okay and let's actually copy this wait actually let's let's put the parenthesis in here okay and if this one is actually different than 3 and is also different than 4 okay we're gonna let's say uh, shake screen uh, let's do it for half a second because it's much better all right so let's see does this actually work it should theoretically work now my project is very big so you know you'll have to excuse it it's gonna take a long while um, let's actually close that so let's actually see does this actually work or does this actually work okay until it actually loads um, if you want to uh, use this script right inside the event okay and this event is actually che uh, checking its own ID okay um, okay let's see we should have actually okay we see because it's not 3, it's not 4, we don't have any error. Okay, it's going straight here. It's different than 3, it's different than 4 because it's 0, it wasn't changed at all. Right? Now, one last thing uh, before I ch end this video. Um, if you want to do it for an event, let's say you have 10 events and they want to check their own, uh, you know, uh, you know, you will have to do a game map dot event of i don't know x okay let's say a right and for this one you will have again event a dot y okay the y coordinate okay now if you have 10 events okay and they're gonna check for themselves if 
uh, when they step on something their uh, let's see uh, the event the region ID okay where each one of these events steps uh, is a certain value okay uh, you would actually have to use you know a lot of things like event A you go to the next event it's gonna be event B it's gonna be event C so as long as you don't do this in a parallel common event because um, it cannot use the um, keyword this instead of this you can actually use this dot event ID okay now what this means okay this is the equivalent of that function okay of you know uh, of this part show animation uh, mm, this function this event okay it's that same function and you know the function from here or the this event okay so if you have multiple events that um, are using this for themselves and themselves only specifically and they are map bound events namely they are not common events uh, or they can actually be a common event but a non-parallel and non-autorun event and at the same time this common event uh, must not be triggered by a parallel common event or a autorun common event right as long as it is triggered by any uh, event on the map right so let's say we have four events in here and every time they step they actually have to read this line okay and when this they read this line okay what they can do you can actually put you know like this one right you can put this one uh, this one single line in a common event right a non-parallel com common event and each of your events are constantly gonna check for that okay your parallel events that you're gonna be those characters of yours right they're gonna summon this at every given time and each parallel event most likely want to add like you know at least let's say 20 or 30 frames you don't need to have this uh, be checked 60 times per second you just need it uh, let's say at least twice per second let's say so uh, if it's if you need it twice per second you need 30 frames if you need it let's say three times let's say 20 frames okay and this 20 frame you're gonna put it in the event itself okay only if it is uh, triggered by the event itself if it is a parallel common event or a parallel event that constantly checks these you know for other events you just use this one with the specific ID of the event okay now in here you cannot change this ID okay you cannot add an ID because this one is a fixed phrase okay so hopefully this video was uh, you know useful enough uh, keep RPG making you are loved and appreciated looking forward to helping people more with scripts and understand them I actually took my time to understand many of those because they are not commonly explained so why not actually take some time and explain these to people and allow them to slowly and surely do things much faster you're gonna need some programming or at least you know at least basic programming language for some to use especially at a broader range so all these being said feel free to like and subscribe feel free to uh, throw me in the event you know in the uh, common event section okay uh, any questions that you may have and I'm surely gonna answer uh, well as time allows I'm gonna answer uh, your inquiry and see how I can actually help you with your point okay all this being said take care you are loved and appreciated live life stay awesome Ferenc on board signing out